Hi, everyone. Welcome to our latest fireside chat. I'm Heather Florio's Director of Customer Success, and joining me is Marsha, our Director of Therapy Content. And we are here to talk about our latest lesson on water safety. So we're going to host this a little bit different than we have in the past. I'm going to ask Marsha some questions. She's going to be gracious enough to answer them. And we hope that you will check out this lesson once you have a chance to download the latest version of Florio. So Marsha, to start things off, can you just remind us of who you are and how you came to be the Director of Therapy Content at Florio? Yeah, so my name is Marsha. I'm the Director of Therapy Content. I work with our fabulous engineering team and game designer to craft all the Florio experiences you see. Um, my background has been, my background was in special education and clinical work. I was a special ed teacher first for kindergarten to third graders, and then I took over a classroom for 18 to 22 year olds and developed a really, really deep love for the adolescent and adult population. Um, after several years as a teacher, I moved over to being a BCBA, where I helped launch an outpatient ABA clinic that was part of a pediatric hospital in DC. And I got to work alongside some really fabulous clinicians working in speech therapy, occupational therapy, um, assistive technology. Um, and I've used all of that experience and expertise uh, here at Florio. So really happy to be here. We're always happy to have you. Okay, let's start things off talking about the latest and greatest Florio lesson. So what inspired the creation of this water safety lesson? Yeah, so we created this lesson because water safety is a critical issue for autistic individuals. The Autism Society has highlighted, highlighted some troubling statistics. Drowning is the leading cause of death for autistic children under 14. Um, and autistic children are about 160 times more likely to drown than their neurotypical peers. This past summer was the worst on record for autism and wandering fatalities. Our goal is to help in the prevention of such tragedies by teaching essential water safety skills. And this lesson is the first in a series, beginning with a tutorial on safe behaviors, adult supervision, and the importance of flotation devices, Future lessons will involve more hands-on application, knowledge testing, and we're also improving how learners move and interact with the environment. Um, so I'm hopeful that future versions of this lesson, once we've made some of these improvements to learner movement um, and interaction, we can start to tackle uh, lessons that involve wandering near bodies of water and how to stay safe. I do want to note that it's important that this lesson is used alongside other key safety strategies like teaching swimming or water competency skills, um, ensuring that pool areas, especially if it's a private pool area, are enclosed with self-latching gates. If you use public pools and public uh, aquatic spaces, often those are gated in. So if you're entering or leaving, you know, taking that extra second to make sure um, that that gate is closed. And our goal uh, is for these lessons to be one tool in everyone's water safety toolbox. So, and who is the target audience for this lesson? So I would say this lesson is designed for all learners. Um, it's especially valuable for those who are new to water safety. It's particularly beneficial for those at developmental stages where understanding rules and safety practices are essential. But the reality is, is that learning how to stay safe around various bodies of water, whether it's a pool, a lake, or an ocean, is a critical life skill for everyone. So I would say that this lesson could be really relevant to any learner. And what skills does this lesson aim to develop? We really try to emphasize safety awareness around water. We use a backyard pool setting as the starting point, but it also covers expressive language, specifically making requests, um, teaching learners how to identify adults who are available to supervise, and then giving them the opportunity to practice asking for supervision before they go swimming. And this lesson set up a little bit different from other Florio lessons. We actually have Myra, one of the characters, lead the pool safety tutorial. Can you explain why you chose to have that be the case for this lesson? 
Yeah, it's a great question. And it's true. It's a little bit different than what we typically do in Florio. Um, and there was a few few reasons we did that. One, we love Myra and we think that she is a really approachable and engaging character uh, and can kind of give supporting positive social interaction when learning some of these concepts. Also, there was a 2012 study done um, in Taiwan that found, they found that peer and sibling assisted learning actually improved physical and social interactions for autistic children. Um, there were 21 autistic children and 21 neurotypical children. Um, and they learned actually aquatic skills. So this whole study was done around um, aquatic skills and swimming behaviors. And they found that the autistic children who learned alongside their peers or siblings uh, there was a significant boost in their skill acquisition. So we hope that with Myra, we can encourage similar interactions, combining skill development with positive social experiences in a safe environment. I love that so much. Um, can you explain how the interactive stations work within the lesson? Yes. So each station focuses on a different safety aspect. So the first station that the learner interacts with is the pool rules station. And here the learner gets to gaze at the different rules. And Myra explains what those icons, those symbols mean and why they are important. The second station that you go to with Myra is the adult supervision station. And there is a range of grownups in this area. And some of them are busy doing things. Um, and one is actually not doing anything. And the whole point of this area is to help learners identify that there may be a lot of adults around you, but not all of them are necessarily available to supervise you. So in this scene, there's one guy who's grilling on the grill and his back is facing the pool. And that's not something someone that we would want to ask to watch us in the pool. Um, however, there is an adult who's just kind of hanging out. She's not doing anything. She's not talking to anyone. And she happens to be looking at the pool. So that is the adult that we would want the learner to ask, hey, can you watch me while I swim? The last section that you go to is the flotation station. And there's a lot of different floaties that are there. The idea is we want to reinforce that anytime you're in water, you want to have easy access to something that you can grab and hold on to in case you get tired, um, in case you need a little bit of support because you're not you're not able to swim or tread water anymore. Um, so there's a lot of different floaties available. Some are intended to be in the water and some are objects that while they might float in the water would not be something that are safe enough for you to hold on to. Um, and the learner gets the opportunity to pick what flotation device they want to use. And what makes this lesson a tutorial? Great question. And this is also something that I, is a little bit different uh, compared to other lessons that we have released in Florio before. Um, as I've mentioned in, in other fireside chats, we're really working toward having series of lessons and series of experiences that build on difficulty. Um, so this was really intended to be a foundational lesson where we teach foundational water safety knowledge um, in an easy and accessible format. There's lots of clear guidance. There's simple interactions. We're not requiring the learner to do a lot of application, right? There is the element of ask, practicing a supervisor to watch you in the water. Um, but separate from that, you know, we're not doing a lot of tests for knowledge. This is really just meant to provide information in an engaging environment. Um, and so this is ideal for those that are just beginning to explore water safety. This is also a great lesson to just reinforce some of that knowledge for learners that maybe do have more experience or exposure to water. Um, but as I mentioned at the start, this is number one in a series of lessons around water safety. So you can expect that future iterations of this lesson will have a lot more application. Um, and as I mentioned, kind of the ultimate goal is to design an experience um, where the learner and the events, they kind of wander away from the group. They know how to stay safe um, and they know how to find their way back to safety. And can you share other resources that are available to reinforce water safety concepts? Yes, there's a lot of really good ones, but the three that I would love to highlight are um, the Autism Society of America has excellent resources on this topic. They've done a lot of work around wandering and water safety. There's also the September 26 project that has some really excellent resources around not just 
wandering and water safety, but they also have some resources around fire safety. They have a really excellent um, wandering prevention checklist. And then there's also the National Drowning Prevention Alliance. They have some really exceptional resources. Um, they talk about a framework called the five layers. So kind of what are the five things you need to know to help keep uh, children safe around water? And we will share links to all those resources for further learning. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marsha, for sharing your time. We are so excited to hear what folks think about this lesson once they have a chance to play it. Uh, if you don't already have a Florio subscription, please reach out to us. You can email us at info at and we can find the best subscription that works for you.